Jerry at Fair Oaks. Just wait, Harold. Wait until they hear what I've got to say. Yeah, if they'll listen to you, Lee. Oh, they've got to listen to me. I'll make them. That's what you think. But if they don't want to, they won't. You're certainly not very optimistic. Oh, don't get me wrong. I sure hope they do listen to you. But I wouldn't be so sure if I were you. Well, if they won't listen to me now, I'll wait until I'm questioned again. And then I'll come out with it. Can you imagine Red Morrison being on that court? Listening to Jerry being accused of something that he did himself? That's sure nerve for you. That's more than nerve. It's, It's mean. And even that isn't the right word for it. Come on, hurry it up. You're lagging. Did you ever stop to think that you've got longer legs than I have? Well, move yours a little faster then to make up for the difference. We've got to get back before it's all over and they find Jerry guilty. After you tell them what you found, they'll start all over. You mean reopen the case? Uh Uh-huh. Maybe. Oh, they won't be through yet. Well, I don't know about that. When I left, they were calling Sergeant Alden to be questioned, and I think he was the last witness. Did he think Jerry did it? Mm Mm-hmm. It was he and Ted Metcalf who figured Jerry was the guilty one. They were the ones that sent Jerry into Major Davis's office yesterday for questioning. I thought Ted liked Jerry. They seemed to get along all right. Now, wait a minute. Don't hold it against Ted for wanting to get at the bottom of a thing like this. It's serious, and it should be looked into. Yes, and regardless of who it hurt, friendship has nothing to do with beauty. I suppose you're right about that. Sure I am. Hello, Phillips. Oh, hello. What's your hurry? You going on a fire? Well, worse than that. Should I wait outside? No, sir, you come right in with me. I might need you to back up my story. But you didn't tell me what you found in Red's room. What could I say? Never mind. You come with me. You going to knock at the door? Nothing doing. They might not let us in. I'm going to break right in on them. And here it goes. So every witness has admitted that Cadet Jerry Duffy has never been known to say anything against Just a minute. What's the meaning of this, Cadet Phillips? And you, Linwell. I'd like to say something, Major Metcalf. It's very important. There's a case being tried in this court right now. And that's important business enough for the moment. But what I've got to say, sir, has to do with this case. I've got to tell you. Just a moment, Phillips. Captain Bogart. Yes? This is rather unusual procedure. I'd, I'd like to ask your advice in this matter, sir. Phillips says he has information bearing on the case. Let the defense continue with Cadet Dugan, and then we can listen to what Phillips has to say. Uh, you might let him remain in court until you call him. Thank you, Captain Bogart. We'll hear what you have to say as soon as Captain Radford finishes questioning Cadet Dugan. You may be seated, Phillips. Thank you, sir. Continue, Captain Radford. I'd like you to tell the court, Cadet Dugan, whether or not you have ever committed a malicious action before coming to Pharaoh's. No, sir, I, I've not. Have you ever taken part in any pranks or, let us say, practical jokes? No, sir. Have you ever been accused of either? No, sir. Thank you. That will be all. Now, gentlemen. I think in questioning Cadet Dugan, I have brought out the fact that his character is above reproach. I think it's safe to assume that a young man, such as Cadet Dugan, who has had good training, is of good morals and habits, wouldn't, in a short time, change to a malicious and ruthless person. His character belies the fact that he would be capable of the crime he is accused of. In closing, I'd like to say that while we have been unable to present witnesses on our behalf, or established alibis, the evidence presented by the prosecution has been purely circumstantial. That's all. Thank you, gentlemen. Now, Cadet Phillips. Yes, sir? Step up here, please, and tell Captain Bogart and myself your information in regard to this case. Yes, sir. 
Is that all now, Captain Radford? I'm afraid it is, unless Lee Phillips really has some new information or evidence that will help you do that. He sure seemed anxious to tell what he knows or what he found out. Yes, he did. Well, let's hope he has something, because if he hasn't, I don't think there's much in your favor. You mean, you mean they'll say I'm guilty? Now, take it easy. We didn't have any alibis, you know. You were out in the store with Splendor, and you admitted making that remark to Major Metcalf. Looks bad for you. But, but you just said in your last speech that they only had uh, circumstantial evidence against me. Yes, yes, that's true. But we'll just have to wait and see. Wait a minute. Captain Bogart's going to speak. Order. Gentlemen, Major Metcalf and I have just received some startling and enlightening information in regards to this case. Cadet Lee Phillips has just presented some facts that by all means bear looking into. Gee, boy, is that news. This may be a break for you, Duggan. Major Metcalf, you may give the court their instructions. This court will now adjourn in orderly fashion to Trent Hall, where we will be again in session. I'll phone Dr. Campbell and tell him to meet us there. Good. Hurry it up, man. Yes, sir. Hey, have you got any idea what this is all about? No, I haven't. Not as yet, but... It looks good for you. They certainly wouldn't be going to this trouble to get more evidence against you. But I can't figure out why we're going over to Trent Hall. I can't see what that's got to do with me. Well, chances are Lee has found some evidence that's going to be in your favor. And in order to see the evidence, we've got to go to some room in Trent Hall. Well, it's over my head. I, I can't figure it out. But I'm sure glad. You know, I've got a feeling now that maybe they'll find out I wasn't to blame after all. Well, if that's the case, you can certainly thank your friend Lee for coming through for you at the right time. Gee, I'll say so. <laughs> Lee's all right. Hey, did you notice the way he answered the questions Captain Lockhart asked him? Yes, I did. It was like pulling teeth to get him to say anything against you. Oh, he's a pal. Hey, Jerry. Oh, Harold. I don't know if I'm supposed to be talking to you or not. Do you think it's okay? No, I don't know. I guess so. Uh, how about it, Captain Radford? I can't see where we'd do any harm. Boy, are you lucky. You don't know what this is all about, though, do you? No, do you? Well, I, I know something. Well, what is it, Linwell? Do you know why the court's adjourned to Trent Hall? I know part of the reason. <laughs> oh, come on, then. Out with it. You really think it's okay to tell? I don't want to get any trouble over it. Certainly. We'll find out in a couple of minutes anyway. But you can relieve Dugan a little by giving him some advance information if you have any. Well, one thing I know. The court's going over to Red's room. Red Morrison? What for, Linwell? Well, that's the part I don't know. Well, then how do you know we're going over to Red's room, then? Because Lee and I went over there while you were in the court-martial. And Lee found something that's sure going to help you. Found out something? What did he find? I don't know, but he said he had enough proof now to prove that you didn't loosen the saddle. And besides, he said he was sure, uh, sure Red did it. You mean Phillips can show proof that Morrison was the one that caused the accident? That's what he told me. Red Morrison? Well, how could he... Well, well, I don't know what this is all about, but... Well, Red was one of the last ones out to the field yesterday afternoon. That sounds kind of funny. I hope your friend Lee isn't building up something in his mind that he can't back up with facts. Did Lee go into Trent Hall? Sure. How else did he get into Red's room? Boy, he sure took an awful chance. I told him he was taking an awful chance when he did it. But he said it was worth a chance if he could help you. You're right, Dugan. Lee is a pal of yours. He's been at Fair Oaks long enough to know what upperclassmen do to plebes when they're caught in Trent Hall. How about you, Harold? Did you go in with him? Sure, but it's okay for me to go into Trent Hall today. What do you mean today? Well, I made your Metcalf's orderly this afternoon. Oh. <laughs> Let's get into this room quickly, man. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I hope your troubles are over, Jerry. Yeah, thanks, Earl. Go ahead, Dugan. Just stand over by the window. Right. Next to the dresser there is a good place for you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right, all right. Let's settle down now. We're in session again now. Yes, Gentlemen, the reason we adjourn to this room is to investigate the claim Cadet Lee Phillips presented to Captain Bogart and myself. Phillips came over to this room while the court-martial was in session in the cadet officer's club room. Now, I'm aware that Phillips being a plebe isn't allowed in Trent Hall. But we can overlook that in view of the fact that he claims to have discovered startling evidence. All right, Phillips, you may address the court now. In this wardrobe closet are Cadet Morrison's regulation boots. This boot here, if you look closely, you'll see a piece of hay caught in the heel. Excuse me. How do we know that you didn't figure this out to help Jugan? That you didn't plant this piece of hay in the boot? I know he didn't. I was right here with him. Go ahead, Phillips. Well, the hay is only one thing. Now, these gloves hanging here enter into it, too. There are a few white horse hairs in the seam of the right glove. I'll continue now, Phillips. Yes. Morrison, step forward. Yes, sir. Are these your boots and gloves? Yes, sir. Did you wear these regulation boots to classes yesterday? Yes, sir. 
Did you wear these boots or your riding boots at mounted drill practice yesterday? I wore my riding boots, sir. Splendor is the only white horse at Fair Oaks. Is that right? Yes, sir. Were you riding him yesterday? No, sir. Shall I come in? Why, yes, Dr. Campbell. Step right in. Just in time, doctor. Now, Morrison, about a half hour before you were due at the stables for drill practice yesterday, you were in my mechanical drawing class, right? Yes, sir. You asked me to excuse you. Said you didn't feel well and that you wanted to see the doctor. Dr. Campbell. Uh, yes, Captain. Did Cadet Morrison pay you a visit at the infirmary yesterday between 2.30 and 3 o'clock? No, he didn't. Were you at the infirmary at that time, Doctor? Yes, I was, but Morrison didn't come over there. Thank you, Doctor. When I got out of the classroom and got out into the air, I felt much better, sir. Never mind that, Morrison. Major Metcalf, men of the court, I'll carry on from here. Yes, sir. Morrison. Yes, sir. When you asked me to excuse you, I allowed you to leave, didn't I? Yes, sir, but as I said, I only... And when you left, you went directly to the stables, wearing your regulation boots. You went to the stall in which the horse Splendor is kept. You loosened the cinch strap on that horse in order to cause an accident to Paul Warren, just in order to make a place for yourself as pivot man on the riding team. And so you could ride that horse. Is that true? <laughs> Quiet, men. Well, Morrison, was it you who loosened that cinch strap? Yes, sir. Yes, I did it. But I didn't think what I was doing. I didn't realize it was going to make so much trouble. I didn't want to hurt Warren as much as I did, but I... Quiet. Quiet, man. All right, Morrison. You'll go with me immediately to see Major Davis. But first, before your fellow officers and the cadets whom you're supposed to inspire as a cadet officer at Fair Oaks Military Academy, I want to say that in all my years of service, active and here at FMA, I've never seen or heard of such a low trick. I probably shouldn't be saying anything to you at this time. Should probably leave it in Major Davis's hands. But I can't help it. I feel sorry for you, Morrison, when you go out to battle the world. That's all. Major Metcalf, you come with Morrison and me. Yes, sir. You're dismissed, men. You may go to your quarters. Oh, uh, Dugan, before you go, I... I want to say... Jerry, I'm very, very sorry about this. You're a real man. Thank you, sir. Congratulations, Dugan. How's that, Jerry? Gee, I, I don't know. It, it all happened so fast. Ah, oh, gee, Lee. I just knew you didn't do it, Jerry. And, and I, well, I did the best I could to prove it. Nice work, Philip. Thanks, Doctor. Gee, I, I, I don't know how to thank you, Lee. Oh, forget it, Jerry. You'd do the same for me. Huh? You bet I would. Uh-huh. 